So the fourth step in creating a better business model portfolio is a framework in which we can decide where to make our bets. And I've created this, which I hope will be useful for you. It's a slightly different way of looking at a portfolio. And what it's looking at here is the types of assets that you might invest in, or the types of activities that relate to exploiting these types of assets. And as we've talked about before, they have different uh, relative marginal costs of growth, relational capital and assets, much lower marginal costs than physical assets. I think it's a good idea maybe if, we, if we're thinking about how to leverage intellectual and relational capital, that we categorize our activities within this type of framework. Now on this uh, axis here, we look at the return on invested capital risk. And of course, you want to invest in things that are lower risk than higher risk. I'm going to show you some examples in a second how companies have reduced their risk by combining a portfolio in a synergistic way. So we'll come back to that in a second. But this framework may be useful for you to try and plot where you're currently placing your bets. And these are the key questions that I suggest you want to consider. The first one is, this is actually at the crux of the whole thesis of this course. The first question is this, what core business do you want your business model or your platform business model to drive demand for in the future? Today, you make certain profitability from certain types of activities, but what in the future do you want your core business, the most profitable part of your core business to be? If you can answer that, then you can start to think about how a platform could drive demand for that future most profitable business. And the problem I see today with many of my clients is that they have a lot of activities going on and they have different levels of profitability, but they're not clear which is going to be the most profitable in the future. Because of course, each activity is under different levels of threat from new entrants and competitors. So first question is, what is our future most profitable core business that we want to drive demand for in the future? The second thing, the second question is quite a fundamental one as well. What new supply could we create in a marketplace? If you think back to Airbnb, they created entirely new supply. In terms of people traveling, there was no option for staying at, uh, or it was very difficult to stay at in other people's houses. They created completely new supply into the marketplace, which is people's houses rented out. So what is an opportunity to create new supply in the market that doesn't exist? And the, second, the third point is, what new markets could you create that don't exist at the moment? When I do a lot of work with clients, they tend to have quite a broad view of their customer base. When we start to explore the ecosystems in which they operate in more detail, we tend to find niche communities which are underserved. Just think back to the Howes case study from the business model pioneers, finding a niche community of professionals and homeowners and supporting them in a way that wasn't being offered by anybody else up until that point. The fourth point is this, what new experiences could you create that don't exist today? Um, people often talk about uh, creating new experiences. It tends to be just latching on a bit of digital, I guess, interface with the existing product, but dramatically different experiences could we create, which we don't have to deliver all ourselves. Think back to recruit holdings from Japan, creating new experiences for individuals, not just looking to find a job, but also to help them with their life events and their other interests in their digital life. So number five is how do you create network effects? And if you remember, that is the critical, or the most valuable thing to try and create in a digital world. Not only network effects, connecting lots of people together, whereby your product becomes more valuable the more people who use it, but also data effects. You generate so much data by the more people who are collaborating or interacting on your platform that generates insights which can help you create new services that you can deliver into the ecosystem or marketplace. And ultimately, learning effects. You can learn so much more by tracking what's going on if you're, I feel like, coordinating or orchestrating a larger ecosystem or network. And then finally, once we've done that, and I think this is the final part here, we look at what M&A might we need to, I guess, fast track 
um, our development. Often M&A tends to be done in a, in a separate silo and it doesn't add value to everything else we're doing. So those are the key questions. Here's a framework for maybe reconsidering your portfolio. And maybe a, it's a useful task to start to try and map what you currently do uh, on this framework. And next I'll show you some examples about how it can work.